We interviewed Kurt Naus last year about this time as he was entering the position of Volunteers and Mission Coordinator. And now he's back for an update. Thank you for coming, Kurt. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. So um, what all has happened since you entered your position? Tell us a little bit about trips and what all's going on. So much, um, so much information to share, so much information received, really. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about was last year when I began, we had maybe five or six teams listed on our conference website that were open to people from any church. This year, I will have listed over 50 teams. Wow. And, and a lot of that is just getting feedback, getting information from people who are already doing a, a lot of mission work, but we're doing it just within their own church, their own community. And now, in talking with them, they've said, hey, we're open. If we have sp slots open, we're just looking for people with a heart for service. So that's exciting and to be able to spread that and share that through my email lists and through the web page has been has been terrific yeah technology is a nice way to be able to join the conference all together that if we do want to have churches from uh, separate geographic areas come together to do a mission trip they can do that they do and and, and when i saw that um, part of what i did this year was lead two conference mission teams one was to costa rica and one to west virginia and they're a prime example. We had people from the southern borders to up north of, of Wilkesbury Scranton and from you know the heart of the conference. It was really neat to see these folks come from different congregations, different worship styles, di just different traditions even within the Methodist Church mm -hmm. and um, come together and serve, uh, like I said, both in Costa Rica and West Virginia. You said that of those two trips that you went on, you had some leaders come out of that. Yeah, uh, part of what I do when I lead a team is I just I pray over folks and pray over the team that people will be open to what God would use them for, uh, as well as myself. And each time, I, I also want to encourage people to follow that calling. And so one example was our Costa Rica team. There was there was ten of us. Um, two of those ten are now exploring leading their own teams next year. Actually, one of them has is solidifying his dates, and he's taking a team back to Costa Rica. Um, the other is waiting for team training and and is building a team. Um, then our West Virginia team, we had a number of people who have are exploring things for their own community oh, because that's great. they've seen they've seen a model of a community based mission program mm -hmm. and they gathered information from the church we worked with in uh, in Oak Hill West Virginia and they're starting that well, why can't we do this in our community why can't we reach out this way so those are really exciting things to me to see expressions of our faith and to see people stepping out um, to new challenges in their walk both local and global missions are important, so that's neat that you're seeing people um, develop a heart for both of them. It's very, very important <laughs> to me as as the director that we offer a blend mm -hmm. uh, of local, national, and international. And I always encourage folks. I, I hear people say, "Well, I don't want to go to X Y Z country." That's fine. If your heart and your passion is for your local neighborhood. I want to try and help you find a way to minister there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to encourage folks to follow what God's laying on their heart, what their passion is. Absolutely. What are some of the things that um, people learn at the leadership and team trainings? What we're doing, in, in addition to just having them, I'm excited about is we have, we're working on local training this year so that people will not have to travel four hours, in some cases longer, to get to a training. But one of the things that is really big these days we always talk about in every facet of life is liability issues. And we've had a lot of people over the years taking teams, doing good works and, and running good programs, 
but maybe they weren't protecting themselves or their team members against injury or liability. Some of those issues we talk about in training. Um, we also talk about why volunteers in mission is different than other good organizations and good works. We talk about what the ministry is and the spiritual component and try to get through to team leaders and, and prospective team members that volunteers and mission isn't about deeds. It's about going forward and sharing our faith. And maybe the work that we do on the side is a way to open a door. Um, it's always a benefit, a side benefit, but that's not our main purpose. And sometimes that takes some adjustment and some time to think about in our training. Uh, I know my own life when I went my first, I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just need to be there. Sometimes we just need to listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those kinds of things, those are just two big examples of what we talk about in training. Absolutely. Um, I have been involved with a mission trip where uh, it is important just to sit and talk with the people and share your faith. So, so I thank you for um, incorporating that into the training and for equipping more leaders of missions. It's a great honor. <laughs> If you would like to learn more about Volunteers in Mission, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express, Express. 